We're seeing pressure on North Korea continue to escalate as the headlines keep piling on. And Blake Berman did bring you some of those headlines. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis making an impromptu stop by the press earlier today. This is what he said when he was asked about South Korea claiming to have seized a cargo ship after an illegal rendezvous with a North Korean ship that was in violation of a U.N. Security Council resolution. Obviously, if a government finds that uh, there's a ship in their port conducting trade that was forbidden under the U.N. Security Council resolution, then they have an obligation, and so far we've seen nations take that obligation seriously. Well, the defense secretary also asked if he was impressed with North Korea's missile program and the advances that it's made. He replied, quote, nothing impresses me. And with that, we bring in Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Uh, Hi, good Lauren. to see you. Good to see you. And I, Jim Mattis may not be impressed with them, but I'm always impressed with Jim Mattis. If there is one man or woman anywhere in our government that the American people can trust without any reservations, it's Jim Mattis. He's a good, good man. We have seen so much provocation between North Korea and the U.S. And let's throw China into that, uh, uh, Colonel. Are we at the brink of war? What is the next step to contain their nuclear missile threat, to get China to do what we want them to do, and to make the world a safer place? Well, I think Secretary Mattis's point about not being impressed was to try to tamp down the most hysterical voices, the ones that have us going to war tomorrow. We may well have to take military action to prevent North Korea from threatening the American population. But he's just saying we're not there yet. North Korea still has some hurdles to get over. There is still time for a solution short of war. But what is that solution? Could it be sanctions on China, which denies that they're in violation of this U.N. resolution, this latest one? Is it more sanctions on North Korea? What's the tipping point? before we have to entertain a, a military option? Well, m more sanctions on North Korea are only useful if they're honored by China and Russia. Right. And the problem has been the pattern. Uh, f for years now, and certainly intensifying in the last several months, China and Russia agree to sanctions on North Korea, and then they help North Korea evade those sanctions. And with President Trump's interview with the New York Times, for instance, he, he justifiably and vociferously criticized China uh, for, for trade cheating, intellectual property theft, for cheating with North Korea. But then he undercut himself by personalizing. He really believes that by building personal relationships with President Xi and others, that he can solve great problems. But President Xi, while he's willing to whine and dine uh, uh, President Trump, he will act in China's interest and he'll act ruthlessly in China's interest. And so I would like to see President Trump bring a more sober, analytical, realpolitik approach to all this, because if we do not crack down hard on China, China will not honor the sanctions. And then within the next year to three years, we will be at war. So do you think we sanction China, their shipping companies, their financial institutions? What do we do? Well, we already have imposed some sanctions on individual shipping companies, uh, corporations, some individuals. But if you look at the size of China and its economy, uh, it's, it's really their token effects. You've got to hit China hard. Now, the problem, as you know very well, Lauren, to hit China hard means that some American corporations take a hit. And the strongest advocates that China has anywhere in the world are those American corporations profiting from the China trade. It's only a minority and a relatively small one of, of our American business community, but they've been a, a, a powerful impediment mm -hmm. to us a acting incisively and forcefully with China. But to sum it up, North, the, the, if there is a key to North Korea, it is through Beijing, through China, although we also have to be cognizant of the fact that the Russians are gleefully helping uh, North Korea evade sanctions, both because they see China as a useful ally in, in keeping us off balance, keeping us occupied, but also because Vladimir Putin, another person with whom our president tries to personalize things, Putin is our, in, our determined 
enemy. And he's not our enemy because we want him to be. We want a better relationship. He is the determined enemy of the United States because he has chosen to be, because he hates us, and he does everything he can to damage us, and our president needs to recognize that. And final question, where do we stand on this ongoing Russia investigation about camp, Trump campaign collusion uh, and the like? You, we've seen no evidence of it. You have Congress at odds with the intelligence community. Chairman Nunez uh, wants more information. Trump says he believes the special counsel will treat him fairly. Do you believe that? I absolutely believe that Robert Mueller will, is a man of the law and will treat the president and everyone else involved fairly. Robert Mueller is a great American, and the vilification campaign against him is despicable. Every American who truly loves this country and values what we have should want to know what the Russians did, how they did it, and with whom they did it. It should not be a partisan issue. And again, President Trump personalizes it. It's not about him. It's about the security of our elections, which are the bedrock of our democracy. If I could have one wish for 2018, it would take the, take the politics on both sides out of what is a very serious issue crucial to our democracy. Well said, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Happy New Year to you. And Happy Thank New you. Year to you. Well, looking ahead into 2018, which of course is just a few days away, a headline from The Hill reads, threats of 2017, Mideast, terror, weapons will linger in the new year. The writer of the article, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton, joins us now. Ambassador Bolton, uh, t t elaborate, if you will, please. Well, looking at the circumstances we find with respect to the turmoil in the Middle East, the threat of uh, international terrorism and the proliferation of nuclear weapons, uh, I'm sorry to say this so close to New Year's, but the prospect is that all these problems will not only uh, face the Trump administration again next year, but in many respects will have grown worse because he inherited a lot of the do bills from prior failed policies kind of across the board there. Uh, and while he certainly had some important successes, uh, you can see even in recent days that the problems, for example, of North Korea's program have only grown worse as we've seen China basically try and two time him. Right. So he faces some very tough decisions and uh, it's going to be significant, I think, throughout the coming year. Yesterday, Rex Tillerson penned an op-ed in the New York Times and, of course, North Korea was a, was a large portion of that. And it seemed to suggest or hint that diplomacy could win out, echoing uh, something said uh, by South Korea also this week. But, you know, it's just hard to, you know, it, it, we all root for that. We all want that. And it certainly you as a former ambassador and diplomat want that as well. But I, it, it, will they ever give up their nuclear weapons? I don't think the North Koreans are ever going to voluntarily give uh, up their nuclear program. And I think we've seen... Uh, enormous pressure through sanctions. This is a prison camp of an economy. Uh, its people have uh, lead desperate lives. Hasn't slowed the regime down at all, so, which is why I think there's one diplomatic play left here. It's with China. Uh, my view is that uh, you can't coerce China into this, but you can persuade them that their national interest uh, really requires getting rid of this regime in North Korea. My personal view is unification, reunification of the peninsula is the way to go. There may be other options as well. But as long as that regime stays in place in North Korea, you're going to have a nuclear threat, not just in Asia and the United States, right. but they're capable of selling it to anybody anywhere around the world, right. Iran, ISIS, uh, Al-Qaeda, you, you name it. And that New York Times piece uh, overnight, uh, President Trump apparently said he's been soft on China trade in hopes uh, a return that they will continue to pressure North Korea. And yet they're not necessarily playing by the rules, but the clock is ticking. They must understand the, the gravity of the situation as well. I do have one more for you, Ambassador. Uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. now, Nikki Haley, was named one of the most admired women. How do you think she fared in her first year? Uh, because I think she had, after President Trump, perhaps the best year of anybody in the administration. Well, she had a great year. I'd, I'd give her an A+. Plus. Uh, she has benefited uh, from being basically untethered from the State Department and, uh, and therefore has been allowed, I think, to channel the president's views uh, much more directly than, than people over at State. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's recognition of her accomplishment and, and, and well-deserved. And she also, though, voices her own opinions that don't always uh, 
uh, align with President Trump's on other issues, and, but they get right back into the business. So I guess ultimately the question is, is it too early to start saying she's a potential candidate for president one day? Well, I think uh, there already is speculation about it, I think maybe unavoidably. She's been a successful governor in South Carolina. She's now uh, gotten foreign policy uh, experience, so opens the question, how long will she stay in uh, New York? Uh, is she looking ahead? I, I don't personally know the answers to those questions, but, but I'll make a prediction since we're getting close to New Year's Eve. I do think the first female president of the United States will be a Republican. All right. Thank you. Ambassador, always great talking to you, seeing you. Have a great New Year. Happy New Year, Charles. All right. Our spy satellites capturing images of Chinese ships illegally selling oil to North Korea. And President Trump is not happy about it, slamming China recently in a tweet saying, quote, caught red handed, very disappointed that China is allowing oil to go into North Korea. There will never be a friendly solution to the North Korea problem if this continues to happen. So what do these reports mean about our relationship with China moving forward and efforts to contain or denuclearize North Korea? Joining me now with Insight is the author of Warrior Diplomat and retired Green Beret Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Walls. Colonel, thanks for joining us this morning. So you, you, thanks, you, you pass these sanctions. You want to believe they're actually limiting what North Korea can do. Now we see, right. we see at least 30 times since October where China was caught illegally transferring oil to North Korea. What do we make of this? Well, Pete, for all of the criticism of President Trump for not engaging in diplomacy, you know, we just had the 10th round of sanctions passed in the U.N., as you mentioned. And I think Nikki Haley deserves a lot of credit for getting the Chinese and the Russians on board. But the Chinese have been notorious for decades now for publicly agreeing to sanctions and then privately not enforcing them. So we're seeing yet another case of this again. Uh, I think where does the president go from here? Uh, one, I'm glad he called them out on the behavior. It needs to be done. But two, I think, you know, really the next step is additional what we call secondary sanctions, which are sanctions not against the North Koreans, but against the Chinese entities, the banks, the oil and gas, the food stuff, the shipping industry that are continuing to do business behind the scenes with North Korea. We sanction them and we bring our European allies, the Australians, East Asians, mm -hmm. others on board to, to, to you know, basically start so, having the Chinese feel the pain here. So what you're saying is there's not a whole lot we can do about enforcement of sanctions. If they're going to cheat on those sanctions, they're going to. Eventually, we need to make it hurt for them. Uh, how right. close are we to, because we've heard about these Chinese banks and how significant they are to, to the state there. How far are we in sanctioning them? Well, we did. We made some initial steps for a number of banks and a number, a number of individuals. But those sanctions, the problem here, Pete, is time. Those sanctions take time to actually have an effect. We need, from a diplomatic standpoint, to get others on board, Europeans mm -hmm. and other Asian countries, to have an effect. At the same time, though, we're on the clock. The North Koreans only need to get uh, an ICBM capable of reentry now. They have the range. Now it's a reentry problem, and they're there. They're across the finish line. You know, Colonel, our most recent national security strategy relabeled China as an adversary, not just you know, as someone that we have to strategically uh, look to yeah. oppose. They've just tested China, a new kind of ballistic missile with a hypersonic capability. Tell us what that might mean. Well, these types of missiles can essentially fly under the radar. They can glide for a very long range. It makes it, it, makes it much more of a problem for our ballistic, ballistic missile defense systems. We've, you know, the United States is trying to develop this capability as well. No surprise that the Chinese have essentially stolen it uh, you know, through uh, cyber and other means. We've seen them roll out new generation stealth fighters, new types of drones. You know, Pete, I think at the end of the day, right now, today, if conflict were to break out, unfortunately, we could overmatch the Chinese. But 20, 30 years from now, I'm very concerned. I think we take our technological edge for granted. The Chinese are eroding it fast, and they're doing it through cyber theft and through investment in artificial intelligence and other means. Well, they have a Chinese dream, and their leader has talked quite a bit about it. They, by 2050, they believe... Explicitly. Explicitly about it. By 2050, yeah. they believe they will supplant the United States as the global power. If there was one thing right now we should be doing in the United States, States to curtail the Chinese threat, what would it be? 
Well, there's two things. I, I can't just pick <laughs> one. Two. One is we have to, and this is why President Trump's investment in our nuclear triad and modernizing that and ballistic missile defense is so critical, artificial intelligence, and then separately controlling our debt. The Chinese are the largest debt holder uh, through bonds of the, of the U.S. deficit in the world, and that is a national security threat as well. Yeah, if they can hit us in our wallets, it's a serious problem. Right now we can, right. but if they have too much leverage, that's a bad deal. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks. Good stuff. So Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz, former Green Beret commander and counterterrorism advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, also a Fox News contributor. Michael, uh, what's with the Chinese? They said they were on board with us right. helping uh, enforce an embargo against North Korea. And now all of a sudden we find out their ships are taking oil offshore and giving it to the North Koreans. Well, actually, John, this is par for the course for the Chinese over the past several decades where they have repeatedly, for 10 rounds of U.N. sanctions now, publicly agreed with the sanctions regime and publicly agreed that North Korea must stop its nuclear program, but then privately, the trade, the black market deals, the oil and gas, textiles, other types of activities occur. So. You know, those sanctions are only worth the U.N. paper that they're written on without Chinese enforcement, and that's what's so critical. Well, we've seen this movie before, and you that's must right. have seen it before in the White House. That's right. I was, I was close to the six-party talks where we did everything we could. This was under the Bush regime to try to extend some, uh, you know, uh, some carrots and sticks and to get the North Koreans to stop its march towards an operational ICBM. And, you know, we saw now and we see now in retrospect over several U.S. presidents, North Koreans just use that to buy more time. So, you know, look, there is what, what are the next steps? Uh, one, I would like to see the administration move towards secondary sanctions actually on Chinese entities. So we're not just sanctioning the North Koreans. We're actually sanctioning China and to get an international coalition to join us. We started down that road with some banks and some oil and gas uh, exporters, but we need to tighten the noose there and make the Chinese feel the pain for continuing to do business with North Korea. And also, you know, there is mention of a blockade. Uh, that would be hugely, hugely difficult for the U.S. 7th Fleet, where you'll remember we've had two ships uh, have accidents and run into other ships because the fleet is already so taxed. But at the end of the day, John, we have to do everything. And this president looks like he is trying to do everything he can short of the military option to stop this program. And I think that's the right policy. Uh, meantime, uh, some other disturbing news out of China. They are unveiling a new type of weapon that they say yeah. is invisible to U.S. radar. That's right. This is the called a hypersonic glide vehicle. So essentially, this is a this is a hybrid between an ICBM and a cruise missile. But it can fly for long distances under our radar and gives our ballistic missile defenses very little time to react. So a few things here. One, the Chinese are erasing the American technological edge by stealing our technology through cyber. They've been doing it for, for decades now, and they are quickly closing the gap. And two, this is why modernizing our nuclear triad and modernizing our ballistic missile defenses, which completely atrophied under the Obama administration, is so critical. And the president's put this front and center in his national security strategy, and he's absolutely correct there, too. Back to North Korea for a moment. The Russians yeah. have said that they are willing to mediate negotiations between the U.S. and the North Koreans. What do you think about that offer? So you're seeing Putin here try to interject himself. He actually offered for Russia to sit sit down kind of in the middle of the table between the North Koreans and the United States. The Trump administration's rejected that idea. I don't blame them. It's a bad idea. But what I'm following closely is whether Putin will tie the North Korean issue and cooperation on that issue to the Ukraine and Syria and other issues. Uh, the Trump administration the president just recently authorized a very tough step in selling anti-tank missiles to Ukraine as a defensive measure. The Russians are extremely unhappy about that. And I'll be interested to see now if they back off cooperation in North Korea and other issues as, as leverage in that back and forth in our relationship. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz, thanks for your perspective.
asked if he was impressed with North Korea's missile program and the advances that it's made. He replied, quote, nothing impresses me. And with that, we bring in Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Uh, Hi, good Laura. to see you. Good to see you. And I, Jim Mattis may not be impressed with them, but I'm always impressed with Jim Mattis. If there is one man or woman anywhere in our government that the American people can trust without any reservations, it's Jim Mattis. He's a good, good man. We have seen so much provocation between North Korea and the U.S. And let's throw China into that, uh, uh, Colonel. Are we at the brink of war? What is the next step to contain their nuclear missile threat, to get China to do what we want them to do, and to make the world a safer place? Well, I think Secretary Mattis's point about not being impressed was to try to tamp down the most hysterical voices, the ones that have us going to war tomorrow. We may well have to take military action to prevent North Korea from threatening the American population. But he's just saying we're not there yet. North Korea still has some hurdles to get over. There is still time for a solution short of war. But what is that solution? Could it be sanctions on China, which denies that they're in violation? We're seeing pressure on North Korea continue to escalate as the headlines keep piling on. And Blake Berman did bring you some of those headlines. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis making an impromptu stop by the press earlier today. This is what he said when he was asked about South Korea claiming to have seized a cargo ship after an illegal rendezvous with a North Korean ship that was in violation of a U.N. Security Council resolution. Obviously, if a government finds that uh, there's a ship in their port conducting trade that was forbidden under the U.N. Security Council resolution, then they have an obligation, and so far we've seen nations take that obligation seriously. Well, the defense secretary also...